Welcome, welcome to our worship today. Yesterday, on Saturday, the weather in Aharakal, here in Aharakal, was fantastic. I hope it's great with you and that you have a fantastic day too. It's good to be able to take time out to worship God and to remember that he made us and that he made us for a relationship with him. And so our, our service today will be thinking about how we remind people of that relationship and how Jesus reminded people in his day of that relationship. There's a little prayer in some of the uh, resource material that we use and I'd like just to use this today, not as a, as a prayer, but as an introduction to this service. This is a world filled with abusive authority figures. Many governments are corrupt and there are greedy people around. We long for a kingdom of heaven, for different values to the worldly values. We long for justice to break through in unity and peace. This is a world currently overwhelmed by the chaos of restrictions because of COVID, the worry and the fear that that's causing millions of people. But we are grateful for the hope that comes with the vaccine. And we long for healing and safety and space for all. And this is a world that was created in beauty, in harmony and in diversity. That it would become that again would be our prayer but we look around and it isn't. Let's just take this time, this time of worship, to step back from all of that, to refocus on God and to remember that he did create the world in unity and in harmony and that we have a part to play in bringing it back together. In Jesus' time, it was much the same. There was disunity, there was lots of fear around. Nothing much seems to change, but throughout all of this is the steadfast love of God. Our first hymn today reminds us to hold on to that hope that God gives us. King of glory, King of peace, I will love thee, and that love may never cease. Let's sing now. And now let us pray. Holy God, awesome architect of the universe, powerful and wise beyond our understanding, we come together although we are apart. We offer our praise, 
and we remember your wondrous deeds since time began until now. We gather in the name of your Son, the one who called us by name and invited us into relationship with you, an invitation that came with authority and demands a response from each of us. We are continually surprised by the life of Jesus and how it reveals more of you and helps us to know you and trust you more each day. We wonder at the authority shown in the Gospels by Jesus, an authority that does not seek power for power's sake, nor does he use authority to serve himself. Instead, Jesus uses his authority to help others, to heal, to teach, to encourage, to invite, and to include. Lord, forgive us individually and as part of the body of Christ, when we have used authority given to us to take rather than give, to abuse rather than than serve. Lord, remind us that we are but a tiny part of creation, that we are to seek justice and offer mercy and grace to all. May we seek always to serve rather than be served, and to continue to be co-creators with you, bringing the kingdom of heaven here and now. All our prayers, all our thoughts, we offer to you, holy God. Amen. Mark 1 from verse 21. Jesus and his disciples came to the town of Capernaum, and on the next Sabbath, Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. The people who heard him were amazed at the way he taught, for he wasn't like the teachers of the law. Instead, he taught with authority. Just then, a man with an evil spirit in him came into the synagogue and screamed, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you here to destroy us? I know who you are. You are God's holy messenger. Jesus ordered the spirit, be quiet and come out of the man. The evil spirit shook the man hard, gave a loud scream and came out of him. The people were all so amazed that they started saying to one another, what is this? Is it some kind of new teaching? This man has authority to give orders to the evil spirits and they obey him. And so the news about Jesus spread quickly everywhere in the province of Galilee. Amen. Hello. Today I'm looking at this passage that you've just heard read out and I'm wondering about getting a message across. It's very challenging getting a message across. The understanding of the message varies. Sometimes when I say something, it's misunderstood. And the same applies for when I write something. As soon as those words are lifted off the page by reading, then the message is open to misinterpretation. Sometimes it seems easier to do like a show and tell. But I wonder if that really helps or not. Always what engages other people is the attitude with which you try to get your message across. Is it an I know best kind of attitude? Or is it let's work together and try and understand this kind of attitude? Have we got a surface knowledge or have we got a deep passion for the message that we're trying to get across? And is there an awareness that that message is getting understood or not? Are others ready to hear the message that we're wanting to give, or are they not? 
when somebody with authority gives a message, is that good or bad? What a difference does it make? The attitude of the teacher. It's always very challenging, particularly um, trying to do this by the internet. These COVID times have meant that many of us have had to learn to use Zoom and Teams and goodness knows what else. And I admit, freely admit, that I'm not very good with technology. It's the stuff of nightmares for many of us. And yet I have colleagues and friends who love to spend hours trying to get things working. There are all sorts of bits and pieces around our house, technological bits and pieces, that I could use. For example, I can get the computer to work through the telly. Or can I? Apparently it's called mirror, mirroring or sharing the screen. And my husband tries to help. And he doesn't always understand when I don't understand. He forgets sometimes, he would admit it as well, that I need to learn to walk before I can run. And let's say this can lead to tensions, because I admit that I find it difficult. Sometimes it's easier if he just does things. It's, it's much, much easier that way. But it doesn't help me learn. And it takes time for me to learn. I don't know about you, but patience is essential. Patience to gauge um, my level of understanding and patience to gauge whether what he's trying to teach me has got across or not. It is difficult, very difficult. I need to be aware of what I understand before it can make a difference to my life. Because if I don't understand what I'm trying to do, the chances are that the next time I think about it, I won't know what to do then either. Sometimes, though, that gap in understanding between himself and myself becomes a space where we bridge with a mutual understanding, both of us reaching out really hard to try and connect. And when I finally understand the relevance of what's being taught, that's brilliant. Because until then, it's meaningless. Now, in today's message in the Bible, the scribes may have had a deep appreciation and understanding of their traditions and of the laws and of what they were being taught themselves and what they were trying to teach others. Perhaps, though, they had forgotten to try and see whether others were understanding them. Maybe their attitude was very much, let me do it, I understand and you don't. Maybe many of them had forgotten to take the time to get some feedback, to try and explain and connect. They didn't always take that opportunity. And this has led to a gap in what they were trying to teach and its practical application. They may well have had a deep passion for what they were teaching and for what they understood of the law, but it came from what we call our head understanding and not a heart understanding. Jesus came on the scene that day and he taught with authority because he had both a head and a heart. And the Jews understood the heart to be the seat of passion, of life, of understanding itself. They didn't have such a concept of mind as we do. But Jesus came and he taught from the heart. And he assessed the relevance of what he was doing and he made it matter. It really did change lives. There was no point in going beyond um, the base knowledge and understanding people had. For Jesus, there was no point, because he knew that it wouldn't make a difference to people's lives. They wouldn't understand. The scribes knew that they should have understood what was going on. They should have understood what God wanted of them and seen how Jesus fitted in, but they didn't get it. And that led to tension further down the line. Lent starting soon, and then Easter after that. And this is where those tensions all came to a head. But now, at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, the scribes should have heard the message, God's message, in the teaching of Jesus. 
people recognised that Jesus taught with an authority that went way beyond what the scribes were doing. And in the miracles, the people recognised that this was somebody who actually practised what he preached. Let's reread the passage very carefully together and see what happens. See whether we understand a bit more. Jesus had just got some new followers and they went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and he taught. They, which is the disciples and the people in the synagogue, they were astounded at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed and they kept asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even unclean spirits and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Jesus teaching from the heart. The man with unclean spirits, with demons, was released to be as he should have been. The demons, the unclean spirits, recognised who Jesus was in a way that neither the people nor the teachers of the law recognised. Jesus had shown the teaching had relevance and the scripture had relevance that had been lacking in what the scribes were saying. What was more important in some ways was that he was showing to the people there gathered in the synagogue and to his disciples that there was a message of hope and of opportunity through following his way, the Jesus way. And they would find a new life, a different life. In this passage that we heard, Jesus showed up the teachers of the law, the scribes, you cannot love God and ignore people. If you do not show compassion and grace, a thirst for justice and for righteousness and love for those around about you, God will ignore the rituals and the meaningless words. And Jesus lived in that space, that connection, that bridging space between what the world is and what it ought to be. Jesus' voice today calls each of us to work at making this world, our lives, a place, society, a place of judgment and grace and compassion and giving dignity to all individuals. The teachers of the law that we heard of had forgotten this and they didn't like Jesus reminding them of it of this message that God loves each of us and wants the best for each of us, but not at the expense of others. Jesus' teaching and love connected and still today connects people with the love of God. May we all have the opportunity to find a new way of living. May we find hope and relevance in scripture and in the message of Jesus, and in the love of God, all bound up in our faith today. God bless. Amen.
And now we bring our prayers for others and for ourselves. Healing God, our world needs your gentle healing touch today. As COVID-19 continues to spread and cause chaos for billions of people, we need your gentle healing touch for all who are developing and delivering vaccine, for all who serve on the front line in our medical services, for all who are helping our young people to stay in education, for all who are delivering to the isolated, for all who are working to keep the peace, for all who are putting themselves at risk to help others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As wars and threats of violence continue to rage in many places today, we need your gentle healing touch for all who have been taken from their families, forced to take up arms, for those who have been at war as long as they have been alive and for whom peace seems impossible, for all who continue to profit from warmongering and who endanger others' lives, for all who abuse their authority, using it for personal gain, Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. As our brothers and sisters suffer from all manner of illness and anxiety, we need your gentle healing touch for all who are unable to access health care, for all who have to wait for investigations or treatment, for all who have been isolated from loved ones. For all who have faced death alone, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a moment's silence, we name those people and situations known to us where your gentle healing touch is needed today. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. We thank you for listening to our groanings, O Lord. Give us patience to wait for the answers and courage to be the answer where we can. In the name of Christ, the healer, we pray. Amen. We've heard how Jesus reminded people of that relationship between God and themselves, how God dedicated himself to the people of the time and continues to dedicate himself to everybody throughout the ages. We dedicate ourselves too to Jesus, to following his way, to reminding ourselves and reminding of everybody around about us of the love of God. For he is a generous God, he is a giver of life, full of grace and of mercy. And we come humbly before him to present our offering of ourselves, of our time, of our talents. And if you would like to make a donation, please do so. Details are on the websites and on Facebook pages. We ask that God takes us, takes these offerings and uses them to show his kingdom to build his kingdom so that everybody far and wide may see what it means to be a follower of God. Let's pray together using the words in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. end our worship. Let's think again of those people that Mark recorded, those who didn't know what was going on but who Jesus took time to teach and to be with and to help explain things and show the love of God. Today we have listened. We now go to act to help others understand what's going on, how God wants us to be, to listen to them to love others, to even be a blessing to others, because we need to remember that we do all of this in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. Thank you. <laughs>